I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Psalm 4610 Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. My advice to you today is to take this time that God has given us in his grace and mercy and be still and know that he is God. And that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today, as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Satellites are bringing us a new perspective on some of the indelible images of the recent protests. One photo shows the words Black Lives Matter painted on a Washington, D.C. street. Another image shows the charred remains of the torched Minneapolis nightclub where George Floyd and Derek Chauvin worked. Security. The U.S. government is also using satellites in the fight against the coronavirus. Only on CBS This Morning, we're getting an inside look at the Pentagon agency responsible for satellite intelligence. Senior investigative correspondent Catherine Harridge is, Harridge is at the Pentagon. Catherine, so how does this work? Well, Anthony, good morning. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, or NGA, has a unique position straddling the Pentagon and the U.S. intelligence community, where it collects and analyzes the sharpest images to track terrorist targets and spy on adversaries overseas. Now these powerful tools are trained on COVID-19. From above, iconic landmarks before and after coronavirus hit provide a dramatic slideshow. Watch the crowds vanish from the Vatican St. Peter's Square to Tiananmen Square and Miami Beach. It was like the world without humanity. In many cases, it was. But NGA Deputy Director Stacy Dixon doesn't just look for what's missing. She's searching for what's been added. In Germany, the Oktoberfest venue became a COVID testing site. And last month, a satellite spotted these Chinese military planes on a base that used to be a reef in the South China Sea. Despite the pandemic, countries are still doing things that our military, our policymakers need to understand. As the satellites fly overhead, you can see what the change is on that day. The highest ranking woman of color in the U.S. intelligence community, Dixon says these snapshots shared with the State Department, CDC and Homeland Security provide extraordinary detail. We can get a report either through a human source or a signal source. And then when a satellite passes over, you can actually confirm whether or not the activity actually took place. Her agency relies on partners like Maxar Technologies for unclassified images. The imagery itself can be shared very widely and often is. Steve Wood's team tracked the rapid construction of emergency hospitals in Wuhan, China that just last August looked like this. But largely an empty parking lot. But by January, it was completely transformed. Well, this is like multiple convention centers. That's how big it is. That's right. 1,600 beds reportedly, but multiple other support buildings and all done within a, a space of about two weeks. The Department of Homeland Security later concluded the Chinese government intentionally concealed the severity of COVID-19 in early January while it stockpiled medical supplies. From an intelligence perspective, this image tells you that the Chinese government understood that they had a real crisis on their hands. I believe that's right. As COVID-19 spread to the Middle East, Iran's government seemed to minimize the pandemic. But from the sky, massive new graves were detected in the city of Qom. How did you take social media and then marry it up with the satellite images? We had videos that were being the surface that showed people that were walking to a cemetery that were showing large trenches that had been prepared in case of the growing pandemic. These white piles of debris provided another clue. That was most likely lime to help prevent against the spread of infection. A photo doesn't lie, it's just the facts. With global protests unfolding, as the U.S. and other nations reopen, there are new COVID hotspots. 
Now satellite imagery could help show the way forward. It really gives us a sense to know if countries are really recovering the way that they are portraying themselves to be recovering. It's that fact check. That fact check, exactly. And satellite imagery can help develop better ways to social distance if there's a second wave of COVID or an entirely new virus. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. Satan, in sharp contrast, does not reflect these divine attributes. Satan is very powerful, more than any man, and more powerful than most angels. Satan wants to be like God and even exalts himself above God as we read in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Satan is not anywhere near to being equal with God. The only way Satan can be all-powerful, all-knowing, and present everywhere at once is through technology. There is a coming world dictator known as the Antichrist, who is foretold of in the Bible, who in the near future will control a worldwide government, a worldwide monetary system, and a worldwide religion. He will use surveillance technology to control the peoples of the world. Is he living now? Probably. Is the Antichrist already working behind the scenes to bring about his plan for world economic and political domination? It seems so. From all indications, the Antichrist satanic technology-based system is already being set in place. He will use technology to achieve and enforce his near total control of the world and its people, and they don't even see it coming. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In a conversation on religious questions, Frederick II, King of Prussia, asked Joachim von Zieten, General of the Hussars, whom he esteemed highly as a Christian, for his plain and uncompromised views, give me proof for the truth of the Bible in two words, to which Zieten replied, Your Majesty, the Jews. The general statement reflected his understanding of not only the miraculous preservation of the Jewish people, but his belief that their preservation was for the purpose of bringing God's unfulfilled promises to pass. To Zetan, the present existence of the Jewish people was proof that God's word was true, because scripture had promised that they would remain until all that had been prophesied concerning them was fulfilled. Remarkably, this expression of faith was made in a day when the land of Israel was desolate of a Jewish population and the majority of Jews were scattered among the nations. We need no further proof than the Jewish nation of Israel to show that we are indeed in the last days prior to Jesus' return. Here at the Lion's Gate on June 7, 1967, the 55th Paratrooper Brigade of Commander Monte Gore broke through Jordanian defenses. What happened next resonated around the world and electrified the Jewish people. As Commander Gore broke radio silence with that declaration, it marked the first time the Jewish people controlled Judaism's holiest site in more than 2,000 years. Within six days, we returned to the biblical land of Israel, all the mountains of Judea, Samaria, the Golan Heights. We returned to the old city of Jerusalem, and the city is liberated and reunited. And here we are, 53 years later, a new government, Jerusalem is united, it's fabulous, it's the word of God coming out of the book, materializing and becoming a reality in our times in front of our eyes. Israel's victory in the Six-Day War stunned the world and became a turning point for Jewish immigration to the land of Israel. Throughout the Old Testament, uh, God says that he's going to draw the Jewish people back to the land. But what's interesting is that at that moment, when Mordecai Gur, the, the Israeli general, was 
said on the radio, the Temple Mount is in our hands. When that was broadcast, not just through Israel, but worldwide, it electrified Jewish communities all over the planet. The level of Aliyah, Jews leaving their exile countries and coming back to the land of their forefathers, skyrocketed in the years ahead. Yet more than 50 years since the battle for Jerusalem, Rosenberg says Israel and its capital remain on the front lines. Jerusalem is the epicenter. Uh, for 4,000 years, people have wanted this city and they have fought hard to get it. And so the fact that Israel controls it today uh, is biblical, it's prophetic, but it's also complicated. And we need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122.6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem means praying for Jesus' return, as he is the only one who brings true peace when he returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords at his second coming. Isaiah 43, 1, 5, and 6. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Ever since the destruction of the Jewish temple in 70 AD, the Jewish people have been scattered all over the earth. One of the many signs we are living in the last days is the Jewish people would return to the land of Israel. This prophecy was fulfilled in the late 1900s and is still being fulfilled today. Now, while flights for tourists into Israel haven't yet resumed, those wanting to immigrate to the Holy Land are coming in droves. May became a record-breaking month for North Americans making the move. On Tuesday, 51 people from the United States making what's known as Aliyah, immigrating to Israel under the right of return. So what's behind the surge in interest? Tell us a little bit about the numbers. What have we been seeing? So um, every year there's a, a surge in Aliyah towards the summertime. It makes sense that people come in Aliyah. There's a lot of transition going on. Mm -hmm. um, but what's happened with the slowdown, the pandemic, everyone's stuck at home, is that we're seeing a surge in phone calls, application documents coming in. Something we haven't seen in our mm. 19 years at Nefesh Benefesh. And it's really, uh, it's, it's been an amazing uh, discovery to see what's going to happen. What are they telling you as to why? Why now? Is there something to do with the coronavirus? It's definitely connected to the situation that the virus has presented. I think what the reality is that people stuck home, or maybe I'm speaking on this firsthand mm. of being stuck home, it's caused a lot of reflection by people. It's caused a lot of people to look at their finances. And it's given people time to have conversations. Mm. And that is, and I think, I think with that, with the phenomena that people are now working remotely from mm -hmm. home, that said, well, I've been working, working remotely from home, and now I could work remotely from Israel. Okay. So the calculation is coming out for people. They're running the numbers, and the option for Israel is becoming more real. It's not linked to the fact that perhaps Israel's had a pretty good reputation up, up until now, I suppose, about the way they've been handling and the numbers. So I think there is a connection to that. I think the reality that, that Israel has come out of the stronger and mm -hmm. that we've resumed some steps towards normalcy, whatever mm -hmm. that means, has given a sense of uh, comparison on a higher level for Olim. Right. Naturally, you compare where you're living and where you're going, and immigrants always go to somewhere that seems more attractive to them, but definitely with the health situation has allowed people to feel stronger right. and more confident. The coming seven-year tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation, in which the Jewish people will look on me whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son, and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. They will receive Yeshua as their Messiah. They will cry out, Baruch, Abba, Bashem, Edne. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What a glorious day that will be. What glory it will bring to the name of God. Zechariah 13, 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two thirds in it shall be cut off and die, but one third shall be left in it. I will bring the one third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them, and I will say, This is my people. And each one will say, The Lord is my God. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, 
The pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21.11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. America's COVID-19 pandemic has passed another terrible milestone. As of this morning, more than 2 million Americans have tested positive for the coronavirus. More than 112,000 of them have died. The head of Harvard's Global Health Institute said yesterday the U.S. death toll could reach 200,000 in September. The day-to-day -day number of cases is rising in more than a dozen states compared with two weeks ago. Manuel Bajorquez is in Miami Beach, which marked a new phase in reopenings yesterday. Do you happen to have a face mask yeah. with you? Yeah. After nearly three months, Miami's beaches are open again, even as cases in Florida continue to rise. I got sanitizer. <laughs> Is it the right time to reopen the beaches? You know, we've been thinking about that a lot, and I tend to be more cautious than most. Dan Gelber is the mayor of Miami Beach. He says if crowds grow too large and cases spike, the beaches could close again. We want people to, you know, realize that this pandemic is still here, but we've got to open up our economy. We've got to give people the opportunity to get out there. But as state reopenings and large protests continue across the country, there are concerns about a second wave of outbreaks. Earlier this week, 16 states reported an increase in average new COVID-19 cases compared to two weeks ago. At least 14 states have seen a rise in current hospitalizations since Memorial Day, including Texas, where hospitalizations jumped 42 percent. In Arizona, hospital capacity is at 83 percent. State data shows the usage of ventilators, ICU beds, and intubations at all-time highs. This virus is pretty much doing what it's going to do on its own. I mean, we are not uh, driving this tiger, we're riding it. Dr. Michael Osterholm is the director for the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. He says while it's too soon to tell how much impact reopenings are having, he's still urging caution. I don't think we yet have found that uh, middle ground that is going to provide for the most public health uh, protection, but at the same time also supporting the public's right to enjoy uh, everyday life. As state governments navigate the reopening process, the federal government says it's moving ahead in funding three vaccine trials scheduled for the summer. They'll involve roughly 30,000 people. Dr. Anthony Fauci said this week he still believes a vaccine could be available by early next year. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. In other news this noon, seven people were shot in the city's Spring Garden neighborhood overnight after someone opened fire with a hail of bullets. Eyewitness News reporter Jan Carabello has the story. Neighbors living at the Spring Garden homes on Perth Place are left shaken today after a hail of bullets pierced everything from cars to home windows. One bullet ended up in Alex Gonzalez's kitchen as his disabled mother slept nearby. It sounded like there was a gun battle back here. The bullet came in, we heard it, hit the wall. Yeah, it's been a crazy morning. Gunfire erupted in the courtyard on the 600 block of Perth just before midnight. Police say well over 50 shots were fired. You got woke up out of your sleep with just a barrage of bullets, and it was like right under my window, so, so that's when I fell and hit the floor. This neighbor, who didn't want to be identified, recalls the chaos that followed. When I looked out of my window, I seen a girl running, and I seen her fall. They put her in the car and they rushed her to the hospital. In all, seven people were shot. 
six ended up at Temple and Jefferson hospitals. Two of them critically injured, including a 22 year old man and a 24 year old man who was shot 10 times. It wasn't until two hours later that police found the seventh victim, a man in his 20s, dead. His body found nearby on the 600 block of 8th Street. Also found at the scene, a stack of cash. It's a large amount of money. It appears to be hundreds of dollars, possibly a thousand dollars or even more. Eyewitness News also spotted these shell casings near 8th and Wallace, but police tell us those were from a shooting that happened less than a week ago. Neighbors have had enough. It's just sad. We, um, I guess we need to pray more. So investigators are searching for the suspects who targeted a child's birthday party in Vallejo. The violence broke out last night on Cynthia Avenue, leaving two women dead and three injured, including a 10 year old child. Liz, please say that the group of shooters targeted men, women, and children last night. Tonight, the family of one of the victims is speaking out and saying that the shooters are cowards. With birthday balloons still floating in their front yard, Ronald Brown and his wife returned from the hospital to their home confused, upset, and wondering why. The guys who ever did all the shooting were just, you know, young cowards. They shot at a bunch of women and babies. A neighbor who didn't want her face to be shown talked to us while her relative translated. She first heard um, fireworks, and then, like, 20 minutes later, she heard gunshots. The Browns say they were finishing celebrating the birthdays of their grandson and niece when gunfire suddenly erupted shortly before 10 last night. Witnesses say that more than one person came out firing. By the time I got out, they had drove off. My sister all snuffed over the car. My daughter's best friend passed away right there. The family tells me the one who died are 37 year old Kia Washington and 63 year old Kim Smith. And I'm just praying everybody else is going to be okay and we get through this. Brown says his four year old niece and one year old grandson is unharmed, but his 10 year old grandson, who suffered a gunshot, is recovering at a children's hospital. I didn't no problem with nobody. Why these guys came through here and shot up the party, I couldn't tell you. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. They mentioned at the top tonight there is an urgent hunt at this hour for a gunman who fired on a police station in Paso Robles, California, shooting a deputy in the face, and then a body found a mile away, someone shot dead. Authorities do believe it's related. That community put on lockdown, and ABC's Will Carr is in California. Tonight, police are on the hunt for an active shooter wanted for attacking a police station in California. Shot northeast of the building. Authorities say this is the shooter with that long, curly hair and dark beard. We feel that um, uh, this was an ambush, that he planned it. The gunfire erupted early this morning around 3.15 in downtown Paso Robles. The PD is advising they can hear gunfire coming from the east side of their station. The gunman shot and wounded a sheriff's deputy in front of the station. They take the fire. The DMV. Coffee taking gunfire on 9th Street in the, at the DMV. She's shooting at us. Gunfire is coming from a southerly direction north of the DMV. That deputy was in serious but stable condition. Later, around 7 a.m., police discover the body of a man near an Amtrak station less than a mile away from the police department. The victim was shot in the head from close range, and investigators believe this homicide is connected to the shooting this morning. Within the past couple minutes, authorities released a picture of the gunman. They say without a doubt, he set out to kill police officers, and this is the third time that members of law enforcement have been ambushed here in California in just the past couple of weeks. Tonight, a nationwide search for two missing children has come to a gruesome end. Family members confirm that the remains found on Chad Daybell's rural property in Idaho are the bodies of his stepchildren. Here's CBS's Jonathan Vigliotti. The families of 8-year-old J.J. Vallow and 17-year-old Tylee Ryan saying in a joint statement, we are filled with unfathomable sadness that these two bright stars were stolen from us. Mr. Daybell, do you understand the allegations on both counts that have been brought against you? I do. 
Today, their stepfather, Chad Daybell, sat emotionless as the prosecutor laid out the grisly discovery that brought him to justice. We are aware that those remains are the remains of children. Police, joined by the FBI, unearthed those remains outside his home in Idaho and arrested him. He's charged with willfully destroying, altering, and or concealing human remains. It's unclear how they died and how long the children were buried in Daybell's backyard. The two children disappeared shortly before their mother, Lori Vallow, married Daybell, a popular podcaster who believed in doomsday. Vallow has been in jail since March, charged with child abandonment. Sorry. Daybell remained free until authorities closed in. The court is going to set bail in the amount of $1 million. And it's still unclear what the motive was and what led police to that backyard. We can tell you, Nora, investigators only dug one hole, so it appears they knew exactly where to search. Both Republicans and Democrats in the in Congress are working on police reform, but are approaching it uh, from very different uh, angles. Some on the left are pushing to defund police departments, while President Trump hits the road to talk about it. CBN News Washington correspondent Jenna Browder has the story. The White House confirms to CBN News that the president will head to Dallas today for a roundtable with faith leaders, law enforcement, and small business owners. They'll talk about race relations and police reform. Thursday's trip comes after President Trump met Wednesday with African American faith leaders at the White House and after House hearings Wednesday on police brutality. Democrats and Republicans with the White House are working on police reform measures as some on the left push to defund the police. Facing increasing pressure to weigh in, Joe Biden told CBS News Monday he does not support the idea. Other opponents include Senators Cory Booker and Bernie Sanders. Former NFL player, investment banker and minister Jack Brewer also took issue with it Wednesday on CBN's Faith Nation. The communities that need law and order the most are the underserved communities, the mothers that are single, you know, the elderly people uh, who don't have the resources to protect themselves. If you go into the community, right, and you go in and you ask the families in these communities that are underserved, they're going to tell you that they need more police, not less. Pastor Daryl Scott also warned about the dangers of taking away resources from police departments, pointing to what's happened in cities like Cleveland, where police budgets and presence have been cut. The murder rates have climbed. The property crime is at record levels. Aggravated robbery statistics are higher. Drug sales, drug use, drug abuse is higher. Drug and alcohol related motor vehicle accidents are the highest they've ever been. Brewer says real change starts with faith and family. And the problems start from fatherlessness. You know, our father and our family units, uh, particularly in the black community, have been ripped apart. Uh, and so what you're seeing now is you're seeing that, you know, you're five times more likely, more likely to go to prison uh, if you don't have a father in the house. It starts with our family, uh, with Christian values, uh, and stop trying to push out uh, all of the, the godly principles that our country was founded on. Uh, we got to get the fear of God back in our police department, in our communities, in our kids. Kids, uh, and I think that that's our answer. First Peter 4 17 and 18 For the time has come for the judgment to begin at the house of God And if it begins with us first What will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved Where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? One day Jesus is coming You may be at church you may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready.
The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine, faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.